guys, I have a very, very huge off-road video for you today. And it's not just because I have a Ford Bronco. In this video, I'm here at uh, Jay Couch's Proving Grounds. We're gonna show you how a Ford Bronco, a very capable factory SUV, compares to some big military Overland trucks. Six by six and an eight by eight. There's only one way to do it and start with the moguls. <laughs> and Jay, thanks for having us here. Sure, sure. Is this your playground? What is this? So this is part of the test course we call the tank trap or the frame twister. Uh, whenever you build one of these big rigs, especially if it's got a big expedition body, you got to twist it up as much as you can to its max to see what's going to hit, how it's going to perform, how it's going to fail, you know, how it's going to fail. We have small stuff, we have big stuff, we have stuff that nothing's ever made it through yet. Kind of fun for the whole family. <laughs> All right, so I brought the Bronco here because it's just scale, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to show we want to show what a regular SUV can do, right? Yeah. A very capable one. Um, and then show you big, big trucks. So let me run this little mogul course. All right, dude, so this Bronco is actually one of the most capable SUVs from the factory right now. Yeah. You got, look, front and rear lockers, front disconnected sway bar right there. It's very easy to use both lockers and turn assist, which basically drags the rear tire. Got it. And articulation, maybe not the best of all the SUVs. But look at the but, rubber on this thing, it's grippy too. Yes, these uh, Goodyear uh, territory tires are quite nice. <laughs> <We're definitely tipping. laughs> but dude, with lockers? You oh know, you look got, at that, we just got... floated over it. We're very airborne. <laughs> We're just, you know, just kind of toying with it. Oh, it's, it's cute. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. It is neat. It's just like floating a little magic carpet. I think the Bronco is good for this type Bronco's of stuff. Uh, it's not maybe like a true Baja runner, you know, it's not like a high speed off road machine. But for this like slower speed, it's not too bad. But, you know, that was easy. Well, Super let, easy. let's see the 6x6. Six six. Yep. Watch, the, watch Brian go through the 6x6. Six six. <laughs> That's the nickname of the truck. <laughs> the right? nickname is Brian. Okay. From Family Guy. Well guys, I think that 6x6 six six barely lifted the tire. It's just so giant. And very unique, unusual, at least thing for me, is it has independent suspension all the way around. What I want to do in this video is actually ratchet up the difficulty of the obstacles. So the first one was fairly easy for most vehicles, four-wheel drive vehicles. And then we're progressively going to do some difficult stuff. I really want to see these big trucks exercise. Obstacle number two. It's this um, kind of ravine that Jay dug up here. And in the Bronco, this is the first edition. Uh, but basically every option and I have a 360 degree cameras. I have my front camera right now I can see myself dropping in here uh, It's a pretty intense angle and I'm running on 35s. I've got Bilstein shocks. I've got independent front suspension I've got a solid rear axle with uh, Coils actually so this is a kind of the latest suspension that Ford is offering here and I have to kind of climb up here whoa I almost went off into another ravine not great but my camera helped me out boom relatively easy let's see how the big boys can do this so pretty simple US military is about as easy as it gets we're in drive mode means we lock up a center diff and then I've got 
differential locks up here. You just gotta run through them. This is intimidating from six feet up. It's a lot easier if you can see what you're getting ready to fall into. in Brian is a seven ton this is I believe a ten ton truck but at least we can see what we're getting ready to crash into a little bit of a different line since we are about six feet longer and the teeter-totter effect comes in right about here <laughs> <laughs> I'll lock up the rear diffs. We're gonna do a, a really hard obstacle now, and I'm gonna bring the Bronco over there, but I'm not gonna run this obstacle, because <laughs> I might just tumble into it. Uh, Jay's gonna try it in the eight by eight. Man cat! tight area you saw the truck basically go almost pretty much all the way into it and out will you need to cross something like this on your next camping trip well maybe not but you know you can all right guys I'm gonna tackle this sandy climb I need a little bit of momentum here to get another run at it yeah this is dug up I think I have the clearance I have the approach angles and I don't have the flotation Guys, maybe if I air down, but still, uh, I don't don't quite have enough um, traction. Yeah, the six by six has that advantage. He is air down because he has CTIS, but you and me are at full speed pressure. Well, I don't have CTIS. I know. That's not a lot of rigs do these days, or ever have. All right, let's see. Let's see Brian do this. 
and then I'll try it again in sen mode in the Bronco. How can that be? How, how can a truck that weighs 30,000 pounds climb the sandy hill and I cannot on my Bronco? There you have it. That's military technology right there. was really sandy. Um, this Bronco is oh about... God, Bob, <laughs> that was impressive. Hey, Sorry, I just kind of dug in there. So Jay, walk me around this Oshkosh 6x6. So this is a newer series. It's not your, not your grandpa's deuce and a half. MK23, MTVR. Uh, 53 inch tires, stock size on a 20 inch wheel. And then uh, what's really cool on this rig, well, it's got a 12 liter cat, which is pretty cool, good power. The cab is a quarter inch thick aluminum. This is all, and I'm not kidding, it's a quarter inch thick. The other cool thing is, maybe if you kind of look up in the front down here, is the thing's all independent suspended. So full on independent suspension all the way through with locking differentials. You never see that on big rigs. So that's cool. That's where this one, uh, I jokingly say it rides just as bad on the highway at 60 miles an hour as it does off-road at 35, 40. So <laughs> what kind of like torque or power are we talking about approximately-ish? This one's turned down to, I think, 385, but that's a, that's a we're talking diesel horse, like we're talking yes. semi-truck horsepower yes. now. Yes. So I call it 385, 400 horse, and then we're 1,200 foot pounds of torque. 13, so like semi truck ca yep. category. Yep, basically. it is a it is a uh, medium small semi truck motor. Okay, that's legitimately what it is. And then it goes down to a massive Allison automatic that should be used in a giant crane, followed into the six. What's cool with this six by six design is you can actually see the independent units. We can actually remove these huck bolts and we're actually gonna stretch one of these to make into an expedition truck. So we're sliding it back three feet and we're doing a frame extension and making a crew cab so I could have a 20 foot living quarters on the back of one of these. Whoa. So, okay. and, and the steering components are all there. We change a half shaft. So we're doing a counter steer for the rear axle. To that's help important. with a little, yeah, yeah it's really important, important cause it doesn't like to turn anyway. Yeah. But yeah, just a neat rig, locking diffs on all three. CTIS, good clearance, reasonably good clearance, and uh, it's it's lightweight for what it is. It's 29 plus thousand pounds. That's lightweight? That's lightweight. <laughs> so what I, are these trucks used for? Like carrying equipment, towing big trailers? You're, you're not gonna believe this, man. What? They'll tow a good sized trailer, but they'll just procure, I think it's like 10, maybe 12 troops in the back. Okay. With maybe a light armored carrier, where about the same amount as we have in some of our smaller mogs. So okay. it's American, man. We just go it's bigger. Just, it's <laughs> Boom! Just, it's just overbuilt. <laughs> it's right? just super overbuilt, super heavy. You can tell almost anything. They just, it's it's very overbuilt for its purpose. So the Marines love it because the Marines are traditionally really hard on stuff. But I've gotten this thing through the off road course at speed, and I can almost get I get two axles off the ground. I can't get the trailing axle, but I could get it airborne. And it lands pretty good. It's just you're so tall, you get thrown all over the place. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's a cool, it's it's pretty pissed off. <laughs> now, what's this little man machine about? So ba the little man cat here, <laughs> they call them cats. I don't know where the cat, it's K-A-T, man cat. Okay. Um, we've got 18.27 liters of V10 German diesel. Goodness. Goodness, yeah, <laughs> good, German goodness. It's not turbo, we'll take care of that. We're gonna twin turbo it. Okay. But then what's really, really unique with the cats, 
This is a full coil sprung link suspension. This is like a rock crawler's dream, but in a 10 ton military truck. So front four wheel steer, it's wow. really clever. Okay. So you got locking differentials, you have planetary reductions in there. So we have 19 plus inches of differential clearance. Uh, we have a 50 ton winch hiding right here for recovering other vehicles. And then we have a, I think it's a 10 or 20 ton winch actually hiding in the center here for self recovery of itself. So that, that winch it, for self recovery runs out the front, excuse me, it actually runs out the back, does a loop and then goes all the way out the front so you can run it either way. But with that long length, it's self, it's self winding because it'll actually follow its own path. Um, it, it's just cool. The other thing that's neat is the frame, they call it a flex free frame. So if you ever watch this thing off road, it doesn't twist just as suspension does. So if you put, need to put a missile launcher or something on there, you've got all the mounting capabilities. You don't have to have a floating subframe like we do in most of our trucks. And it does, it's got a hydraulic lowering suspension that brings it down, I think eight, 10 inches to compress it, to go into an aircraft transport. You compress it, put cable so it doesn't release, and then you can stick it in a plane because the thing's low profile. It's just heavy, you know? And again, lockers, coil sprung, just it's just cool so you can lock every axle basically. you lock every yeah. axle yeah. you lock the trans transfer case and then you can lock the rear pair of axles and then you can lock the front pair of axles and what's cool is this is the transfer case and transmission hiding up here <clears throat> completely divorced of the engine so up there's the engine here is the clutch and the torque converter so it's all managed back in here it's a really interesting design and the center of gravity is very low on this compared to some of the uh, big trucks we deal with so you can put a gigantic camping system up here too like a house yes, basically yes. so you yeah, remove the winch the, this winch leave yourself recovery and we can do a 20 something foot living quarters in the back and because we're already low profile you, you know we, it's best to keep it low but think about that if you have a house that's 20 feet long on a big truck when they twist up off road that's a problem with these cats they just stay. It's not a problem. Yeah, okay. they, they'll run four inch pipe tubing, almost five inch that runs for a tree cage. It goes from the front all the way to the back over in Europe on the race trucks. It's, I, I look at it, I'm going, yeah. What, what sold me on one of these is racing in Germany in my 500 horsepower Unimog. And we had a guy with two of these turned up, a 22 liter and another probably, maybe it was only 16 liter. And watching those guys try to stay, trying to keep up with them, was incredible. And then once they dive, dove into the trees, it looked like you're at Jurassic Park trying to trank dart a bron bronchosaurus, bronchosaurus. Just like branches are flying off. It's just, whoa, and I watched the last two axles disappear in the woods. I'm like, I'm never getting around these guys. <laughs> so I had to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> so Jay, how do we figure out what's best and what's what? Because the Bronco is a good daily driver, very capable, aired down and can go most places. What about Brian and... <laughs> Brian and the man cat? <laughs> and the man cat. So the man cat and the Brian. Brian, if you need to carry 14,000 pounds off-road, hmm. perfect. And it's oh. actually nice on the highway. It does 65. Okay. A um, little thirsty. Uh, the man cat, that's a 10-ton capacity truck off-road rated. Okay. Uh, that's for when you get something really big like Brian really stuck. Uh, to you, get bring man -cat you bring the man cat out. Yeah, okay. that's the heavy recovery rig. So... And you know we can scrape uh, scrape all the stuff off the back, and you could put a the Taj Mahal of uh, RVs on it. On both of them, actually. Actually, both of them. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And what I saw today was the uh, eight by eight. The Man Cat was fairly maneuverable, actually, yeah. for its size. Right? It can turn. It can go in small places, smallish places. Small <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brian doesn't turn very well. Nope. But he made that sandy hill look like nothing. Yeah, it was kind of embarrassing. Oh, I made it good in the first time, but I'm the one who softened it up. <laughs> I went out when it was still stiff. That's why I went first. <laughs> but yeah, so the maneuverability of uh, the Oshkosh Brian is, it just doesn't turn very well. Same thing with our 10 by 10 doesn't yeah. turn well. Man Cat, oh, it's just nice, but it's big and heavy. I mean, the thing's 50 something thousand pounds where Brian's 29,000. And then what are we? 5,000. Okay, 5,000. Ish. A little bit more. So yeah. that's kind of the scale. Um, yeah. Yeah. What are they good for? Fun. Fun and impressing the neighbors for sure. You pull up at this thing, either of those guys in your neighborhood, as long as you're not in an HOA, you're the talk of the talk of the town. Yeah, HOA. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. I My pick, Jay, is um, the 8x8. Yeah, mine That's too. my pick. Yeah, the 8x8. It's sick. Coil sprung, link suspension. Selectable lockers on all four axles. You know, it's just in no computer anywhere. You know, EMP proof, you name it. And the visibility is 10 times better. And if you want to make a 
sick, sick camper, that would be the one. The only thing that stinks is the pass through. You'd have to go like right by the engine. But also keep in mind, what is, what's the leader of that motor? What's displacement of the Bronco? 2.7, it's a big V6. 2.7 turbo, 12 liter turbo in air cooled, and then 18.27 liter non-turboed. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. We're going to twin turbo charge the 8x8 pretty soon, though. Holy. Yeah. Okay. That'll that's another good. video. Yeah, that's another video. We'll and also, it. we have another video with a 10x10, 10 10, so uh, you can come back for that. As always, thank you. TFLoffroad.com and couchoffroad.com. Cool. Good one.